Welcome to another installment of Dumpster Fire, the uh, third week of April 2018. If you've ever been told by somebody that they wanted to give you a divine impartation, mm -hmm, go ahead and hit the uh, subscribe button below and hit the like on there. It helps us out. All right, I hope you're sitting down. We've got a few really crazy things to look at today. Uh, not the longest episode of Dumpster Fire, but I think you'll kind of get the point. We're going to start off by heading over to Venue Church and listen to Tavner Smith and see if you can make heads or tails of the theology from this sermon titled Dream, Hustle, Win, God's Plan. That's the name of the sermon. Listen in. But I really want to talk to you about God's true plan. Mm. I really want to, I, I, I want to present to you what I believe God's true plan to get his kingdom to the earth is. Okay, so God has a plan to get his kingdom to the earth. I, I, call me weird here, but I thought it was all about, you know, Jesus returning in glory to judge the living and the dead and and, you know, you read like Second Peter, it talks about how at the end of the world, you know, the sun is going to lose its, its light, the moon is going to be like blood red, and the stars are going to fall from the sky, and everything's going to get destroyed by fire. I thought that's how that was going to happen. What are you talking about? Because you do know that is the whole purpose, right? The whole purpose is not to get you to heaven. The whole purpose is to get heaven to earth through you. It, it is? Do you have a text that says that? Did you know that? I know that we've been taught our whole life that we've been, we've been, people try and scare the hell out of us to get us saved, right? You know what I'm talking about? And people try to get us to think that this place is so bad that we should hope that one day we'll get there with him, right? In the sweet by and by, we will meet on the beautiful shore, right? It's like a failed audition for American Idol. She bangs, she bangs, I'm Thank you. wasted by the way she... Thank you. The roll is called up yonder, when the roll is called up yonder. What in the world is yonder anyways, you know what I'm saying? It's time to stop. Yeah, if you don't know what that is, maybe you shouldn't have tried to become a pastor. Well, I'll fly away, oh glory, anybody, I'll fly away. When I die, hallelujah, by and by, I'll fly away. I'm going to call Child Protective Services. It's time to stop. Bad singer, good songs. <laughs> Nothing wrong with the music. But it was not the end intended message that God wanted to deliver to the earth. Okay, w what is that then? God's message to the earth was never supposed to be, hurry up and get back to me. God whoa. Whoa. Um, hurry up and get back to me? Marty, you've got to come back with me. Where? Back to the future. Um, I've never been to heaven. Get back to what? message to the earth was always supposed to be help me get heaven down there through you help me help you <laughs> right the bible says that before the foundations of the world he knew us if he knew us it means we were with him before we were created if we uh, that's mormonism patrick that that's mormonism <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that ain't Christianity. Yeah, it's that Mormonism teaches that we pre-existed with God, uh, but I think it wasn't in heaven. It was on planet Kolob or a, a, a planet near a star named Kolob or something like that. Mormonism teaches that trillions of planets scattered throughout the cosmos are ruled by countless gods who once were human like us. Wow. Tavner Smith, vision casting leader extraordinaire, who uh, wants to be the next Stephen Furtick, actually believes in Mormon doctrine. Who knew? 
were with him before we created. He then saw an answer the earth needed that could only be answered through you. And so he gave you a body to live in to bring the answer to the earth. So he gave you to your family and your year and your city and your circumstance. And his desire for you is not to bring you back to him. It's to bring him through you. We're sorry. The number you have dialed is not in service at this time. Yeah, no. Um, I'll fast forward a little bit in this particular sermon. Uh, listen to his explanation of Abraham, but particularly uh, Isaac and then Jacob and Esau. Have you ever wondered, why is it that God chose Jacob over Esau? Well, he's um, Tabner Smith is going to dazzle us here with his great biblical exegetical skills and explain to us why he believes that God chose Jacob over Esau. I hope you're sitting down. I could talk to you about how I believe that Abraham's dad got stuck in a past season that reminded him of his son and couldn't accomplish God's promise. So God tried out Abraham and said, will you go? And Abraham said, where? He said, I ain't going to tell you. And Abraham said, okay. We'll have to look into this. <laughs> Aha! I see what's wrong with it. Why, this watch is full of wheels. God said, yeah, that, that's not how that went down in Genesis, no. I don't care about your first name. All I care about is, will you do what I say? If you do what I say, you got a body, I can use you. Because <laughs> my plan is, whatever has a body, I can empower with my spirit, and then the kingdom can be built on the earth. So Abraham... <laughs> He's just making this stuff up in his head. Did he have a bad experience with some peyote down in the Pacific Southwest? What on earth? Master! Mustard, yes, but mustard. Don't let be silly. And went right, and they had Isaac, and Isaac got married, and Isaac had twins. His yeah. and his wife had twins. Yeah. Right, and they had Esau, and they had Jacob. Y'all remember that story? And Jacob was the hairy red guy, and he and Jake. I mean, I mean, Esau was the hairy red guy, and Jacob tricked him out of his birthright with a bowl of soup. Not because, listen, not because God liked Jacob better. Because God needed more bodies. and that he lives with his many goddess wives on a planet near a mysterious star called Kola. So the, re <laughs> the reason why God ch chose Jacob over Esau because he was more fertile? I is that's why he chose him? What do you mean, Pastor? I don't think God picked Jacob because he was better. The Bible says Jacob was a trickster and he was a deceiver. I think God picked Jacob because he had the ability to procreate more human bodies than Esau did. <laughs> oh, man. So this is taking Mormonism to a whole nother level. Yeah, you are aware that Jacob did that procreating with the help of four women, right? Um <laughs> No biblical text says, and this is the reason why God chose Jacob, because he was going to give us more babies, you know, because we got to get those spirit children to earth. Yeah. Yeah. Tabner Smith shouldn't, shouldn't be uh, teaching anybody anywhere that, that that's Mormonism, Patrick. It's just Mormonism. Okay. Moving along. Let's uh, check in with Chris Valentin and uh, he's going to move the prophetic goalpost, the prophetic goalpost uh, regarding who is a true prophet and who is a false prophet. And he's got his own ideas now as to who is a true prophet and who is a false prophet. Contrary to what scripture teaches, by the way, uh, we can just take a look at a text real quick in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 18. Uh, uh, the Lord actually gave us one, one, this isn't the only test, but one of the tests of whether or not somebody's a true prophet or a false prophet, and this test is still in play. Just because we're in the New Covenant doesn't mean that this has changed. And uh, guys like Chris Valentin, they tell us a lot of the nonsense of their mind, their man-made doctrines, but they don't tell us what Scripture actually says. Uh, Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, God says, I'll raise up for them a prophet like you, like Moses, from among their brothers. I'll put my words in his mouth. He shall speak to them all that I command him, and whoever will not listen to my words that he shall speak in my name, I myself are required of him. So God is promising Jesus, raising up a prophet like Moses, and you got to listen to Jesus, otherwise God's going to hold you accountable. 
And so they, but then it says this, the prophet who presumes to speak a word in my name that I have not commanded him to speak or who speaks in the name of other gods, that same prophet shall die. In the old covenant, um, death was the punishment for false prophecy. And if you say in your heart, well, how may we know the word that Yahweh has not spoken? Legitimate question. I mean, if we're, if God's going to hold us accountable, how do we know you know, uh, when to ignore somebody. And God gives us, here's one of the tests. When a prophet speaks in the name of Yahweh, if the word does not come to pass or come true, that is the word the Lord has not spoken. The prophet who has, has spoken it presumptuously, and you need not be afraid of him. In other words, he's a false prophet. Bingo. So, I mean, there's the standard, but um, Chris Valentin has his own ideas about these things. Uh, listen to this. No, what's the point? The point is, is that uh, there's a difference between a bad prophetic word and a false prophet. What? <laughs> a bad prophetic word versus a false prophet. Faulty prophets? Bad prophetic words, but they, that doesn't make the guy a false prophet? That, that's not biblical. You can, have, you can get the word wrong and not be a, a false prophet. No, the Bible nowhere says that. Because you give words that aren't, aren't completely accurate doesn't mean you're a false prophet. It just means that you have prophetic words that need help. <laughs> so apparently, you know, uh, because being a prophet is like being a tradesman. You know, you start off, you know, as a journeyman and wor work your way up to master craftsman. And, and along the way, you might really make some really awful things and and not really think through things, but if, you know it, it doesn't make it doesn't mean you're not a a, a carpenter or a handyman. It just means that you're a bad one. What? That there are people who've been wrong for thirty years. I'm not saying they're false prophets. I'm just saying they're bad ones. Prophets who've been wrong for 30 years. I, you'd think that maybe it's time to find a different career. This is absurdity. There's a difference between a false prophet and a bad prophet. A false prophet has an evil heart. A bad prophet just gets everything wrong. <laughs> yeah, that's totally a man-made doctrine. An utter... Nonsense. I'm going to have to keep that. Uh, let's check in with uh, Morris Cirillo um, as he explains to us that apparently he needs to release a divine impartation. Let's check it's in. This anointing will come upon everybody mm. watching me on television, and they will know that I am being led right now by the Holy Spirit to release into their life an anointing. Oh, God just spoke to me. He did. Again, beloved, stretch your hands out to me. No, no. He said, I'm to give you a divine impartation. Okay, let's uh, move on from that. Wow. Okay, yeah, Christian television is getting really weird. Uh, let's check in with uh, Katie Souza and... Uh, <laughs> And uh, and uh, as she explains to us how generosity is a kingdom thingy, and how your 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 the, your new creation in Christ person inside of you is excited to give, but your your wounded spirit man thingy won't give and stuff. This is weird. Here we go. Hi, I'm Katie Souza. You're watching Healing Your Soul: Real Keys to the Miraculous. Everyone's praying that God will supernaturally drop a million bucks in their lap. No, actually, um, I pray the way Jesus taught us to pray. Give us this day our daily bread. What? So, you'll know, they're, they're right there, the first thing she says tells us a lot about Katie Sousa. <laughs> not about Christianity or scripture or even prayers. Clearly, that is not happening. No. Why? Because we need to make some changes in the way we handle our money Right. See, God wants to give you the million dollars and have it just fall in your lap. But before that happens, you need to make some changes. Yeah, this isn't biblical. Or God can trust us with more. Some of those things include how we handle tithes and offerings. 
Now you're thinking. Here she goes. She's starting to talk about money. No, you're starting to twist scripture and teach false doctrine regarding money. You change the channel. Well, yeah, change the channel before your wallet becomes too light to be able to pay your own bills. Religious groups are calling it Judgment Day. There's panic on the streets of London. As an increasing number of reports of serious attacks on people who are literally being eaten alive. Let me tell you what. My husband and I and our ministry have created large streams of wealth through our giving. No, you've created large streams of wealth through your twisting of God's word and mangling it and teaching for shameful gain things that ought not to be taught, like what we're hearing right here. So this topic isn't hype or an effort to try to get your money. Yeah, actually, this is nothing but an effort to get their money. Giving is a real way to please God and to... No, giving money to you would not please God. That would actually probably bring you under condemnation. Potentially grieve the Holy Spirit and things like that. It's a flow of increase into your life. God wants to take you on a financial adventure. What? Where in Scripture does it say God wants to take us on a financial adventure? Yeah, it'd be so adventurous sending my money to you. No. So incredible, you won't believe it when it happens. One of the ways he does that is through your giving. When the Holy Spirit tells you to give, your spirit man gets excited. <laughs> really? I had no idea. So the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit gives me, tells me to give, my spirit man goes, woo oh, I can hardly wait. Oh, this is the best thing ever. I'm so excited. I can't wait to give, 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 give. No, I've never had that experience. Spirit man fully trusts God, has no fear, and knows that when God's telling you to give, he's planning on releasing a huge blessing through your seed. Don't look at me. I, I, I don't know what to do with this. No, I, I'm not going to touch that. It's your soul man that stops you from obeying. It's your wounded soul that is afraid to give. And My wounded soul is terrified to give. It won't, it won't do it. Message for you, son. Causes you to doubt the word of the Lord. So it's your soul that's preventing you from receiving the miracle increase God has planned for you through your seed. Yeah, I, I wish Maura Cirilla would give you a divine impartation at this point. Ah, ah, ah! Today, I'm going to show you how to overcome that fear by getting your soul healed so you can finally get your increase. Right, I got to get my soul healed through this new knowledge that Katie Souza has so I can finally get that million dollars to fall from the sky. Okay. <laughs> Your financial prosperity, according to the Bible, is directly connected to the health of your soul, man. I yeah, just unbelievable. Why are people listening to this woman? Above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Yeah, that's a total twisting of 3rd John. Let's pull that up. 3rd John, uh, starting at verse 1, you're going to note that this is a, a common text that is twisted by people like Katie Sousa and others. And here's what it says, uh, The elder to the beloved Gaius, whom I love in the truth, Beloved, I pray that all may go well with you, and that you may be in good health as it goes well with your soul. For I rejoice greatly when the brothers came and testified to your truth. This is just a standard greeting for the opening of a letter. And uh, somebody like Katie Sousa has twisted it to make it say something it don't say. We continue. Some of you have been making plans for businesses and ministries for many years. You've, you've put stuff in place, you've worked at it, but have you ever really asked God if that's what you were supposed to do? Have you ever asked God? Maybe your soul wounded soul man just wanted to do it. Yeah. And if you did, were you hearing from the Spirit of the Lord or were you hearing from your wounded soul? Because the Yeah, where where does it say I can hear from my wounded soul? I can relate. I can relate. Who speaks? 
It speaks. It speaks louder than the Spirit of God. That should be one of your discernment right there. Oh, this is a loud voice. This is not the Spirit. Yeah, she sounds like she's channeling a demon. This is my wounded soul. It's the same as... <laughs> this is my wounded soul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, she's channeling a demon. It's the same sound and the same voice that goes, I really want to buy it now. Buy it now. I gotta have it. You see, it's so hard for people to part ways with stuff like that. It's like, wow, I put in years into this. Years. Sometimes you're going to have to cut line. You got to cut some line. And you just need to step back, reel it in. Reel it in, yeah. Step back and just ask God to heal your soul before you move forward and do anything else. God, please heal my soul before I do anything else. There is a direct connection between the health of your soul and your financial prosperity. Nothing. Yeah, how is that possible? You think of guys like Tiger Woods, I wouldn't say that his wounded soul has been healed at all. It's not like he confesses Christ, and yet he owns, he, you know, air, private jets and has bazillions of dollars and things. About that, when you're born again, your spirit man was made instantly perfect. You have Christ in you right now. Okay. But yet we all we we tend to make mistakes in the way we spend, the way we handle our money. According to the Bibles, our souls have been wounded by... Yeah, again, no, what you're saying isn't true. It's like sin that have happened in our lives. And when your soul is wounded, those wounds can control every part of your soul and make you do things that are bad with money that you normally wouldn't even want to do or you don't even realize you're doing that that are bad. See, right now... To talk about making stuff up. God can't give you the abundant life that Jesus came to ensure that you get. Really, if that's true and it's all about finances, why are there so many wealthy pagans like George Soros and others? Hmm? Why? In the financial realm. You know why? Because he can't trust you. Right. Why is he trusting Tiger Woods and others? I don't get it. He can't trust you with the money. Yeah, we can't trust you with God's word. Talk about loud women we can't trust with God's word. Let's check in with Real Talk Kim. Here we go. Today we're going to preach. I got a good word for you tonight. Yeah, women aren't permitted to preach. God's word forbids it. Are y'all so excited about Easter? Yeah. It's going to be a party up in this house on Easter. So we would encourage you to go share the flyer right there. You see it. Share the flyer on our church page. Invite everybody you know. It is a proven fact that they said that if people are invited to church, they come. But a lot of times we're afraid of rejection. So we're even afraid they're going to say, no, nah, we ain't coming to church. So you just don't say anything. But I know that on Sunday morning that it is going to be an anointing in this place like never before. Y'all know how we've been having some church up in here. They've been having church up in here, yeah. And if it gets any better, I'm going to be like the Jetsons. I ain't even kidding. Like, y'all, one Sunday, y'all just going to be, just see me. And all you're going to see is my feet going through the ceiling. Because when you get into the presence of God and you put a demand on the Holy Spirit and you realize, I got on Facebook Live yesterday and had a hundred. I can put demands on the Holy Spirit? What? Is the Holy Spirit like my slave? Something thousand people on with me. You know why? Because people are sick and tired of being sick and tired. They're ready to get up and walk out, and they're stopping, going back, and revisiting again. Amen? So today we're going to talk. I want you to look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Shit, shit happens. happens. Okay. Um... Wow. If <laughs> I got to be careful with that word, shift happens. Sometimes your difficult circumstances are less about the enemy being against you and more about God showing you what it looks like 
when he is for you. (laughs) Did the circus forget one of their clowns? What is this? Man, is she loud, too. Let me say that again. We got a live wire here today. Y'all got to listen closely, Linda. Listen. Sometimes your difficult circumstances are less about the enemy being against you and more about God showing you what it looks like when he is for you. Because, <laughs> honey, when you got a call of God on your life, you got some haters. You look like a toddler. <laughs> wow. Um, y- no biblical text says any of that stuff either. Weird. Maybe I'm just one of them haters, you know. And we welcome, we welcome haters, don't we? We welcome them. We welcome them into our life because any time that you're doing anything for God, you've got people in your life that are going to be sent as counterfeits. I talk to y'all about this stuff all the time. This is why you got to pay attention. <laughs> so when people warn others about the false teacher, Real Talk Kim, the people who are warning about her being a false teacher, they're the haters and they're the counterfeits. She's the real McCoy. She's the gold standard for f- true teaching in Christ church. Wow, this the world has gone nuts. Shift happens. Yeah, I w- would agree. It's clearly happening right there as we watched it. Wow. So that's this installment of uh, Dumpster Fire. Uh, if you found this to be entertaining or helpful or something, um, please consider sharing it with other people. If you don't already subscribe to our podcast, visit our website, fightingforthefaith.com. Subscribe to our podcast. You can sp- subscribe on uh, iTunes. We do a lot of uh, 10 to 12 hours worth of long-form discernment work every week to help you rightly understand God's Word and to not be deceived by people like who we featured on this installment of Dumpster Fire. Of course, if you'd like to financially support us so we can continue to do this important work, all the information on how to support us is down below in the uh, in the description portion of our video here. So uh, until next time, may God richly bless you in the grace and mercy won by Jesus Christ and his vicarious death on the cross for all of your sins. Amen.